Hey folks, this is Waylon, and I'm still setting up here. I just got up. I have been up for a while, but I was reading messages from friends and loved ones and uh, Instagram friends and reading New York Times articles about celebrations all over the world. So <clears throat> uh, for those of you who think I look uh, not too good, I am going online uh, early in the day on New Year's Day. Um, still drinking my coffee, which is a very small act of bravery because I definitely don't feel presentable. Uh, right over here is my doggy. If you want to look, there's Redford waiting for me to be done because he wants to go out more. All right. So number one, <clears throat> um, what is your new year's resolution? And if you don't have one, say that too. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about New Year's resolutions um, from a mindful point of view. A lot of people like to make fun of them. I think they're actually one of the most wonderful, uh, potentially wonderful, transformative kind of uh, uh, cultural phenomenons that we have. Uh, the problem is that um, here's the problem with New Year's resolutions. There's a book by Chögyam Trungpa, who is my parents' Buddhist teacher, titled Cutting Through Spiritual Materialism. <clears throat> and too many New Year's resolutions are about trying to make us better than we are already. And while that sounds rational, it's sort of an act of self-aggression. So nothing's wrong with getting better, but it shouldn't be coming out of disliking who we are. It should be coming out of kindness toward who we are and empathy toward others. So there's a very subtle and yet very dramatic difference there that we're not trying to lose five pounds so that we finally like ourselves. We're trying to like ourselves and out of that, maybe take care, take better care of ourselves or uh, go to yoga more or start running or, um, you gotta check out Redford here. Sorry, the McCallan's in the way, but he's just staring at me. Um, uh, waiting for me to shut up and go for a walk, and it's pretty snowy and cold. <clears throat> so I hope you got that. From a Buddhist point of view, any, and here's, here's the great thing. You don't have to care about Buddhism to care about what I just said. This is just hu human nature. If your New Year's resolution is coming out of self-aggression, even on a subtle level, it won't last. Because willpower, there's a fantastic article in the New York Times right now. It's the number one article on the entire New York Times. And it says, if your New Year's resolution is powered by willpower, you will fail. Because the, uh, so I'll just, if you don't mind, I'll keep saying what your resolution is in the sidebar. And we'll go through them. But I'll just read what I wrote this morning. Is that all right? Maybe give it a like or a love or a funny face Komodo Khan. Uh, or a, a dog emoticon if, if you don't mind me reading. I don't normally read um, on video. It seems less direct, but um, less personal. But I just wrote this over while drinking this coffee. Um, so here we go. All right. Come here, Red. All right. Now Red's right by me. Okay. Here's what I just wrote. <clears throat> and it says what I was just trying to uh, explain. New Year's resolutions are often practical. Lose some weight. Start reading more. Start running. Finish that book. What they miss, New Year's resolutions miss, is the motivation that will get us through times of inspiration and lack of inspiration. Inspiration is fickle, right? You're not always going to be inspired. Motivation does not come from willpower. Willpower breaks, falters in the warm trance of the present moment. Maybe I'll just eat that entire cake. When you're sitting on your couch at night, it's cold outside and you're tired, you had a rough day, willpower is not going to keep you from taking a little, little bite of that cake. It might for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, but it won't all night. And as we all know, when you have a little bite of that cake or whatever your habitual pattern is that you're trying to resolution your way out of, you're going to wind up eating that entire cake or as much of it as you can stomach, quite literally. Don't you think, Red? Yeah? All right. Motivation comes, uh, so motivation does not come from willpower. Motivation comes from empathy, from appreciation, 
and from the feeling that we can be a benefit. Those are three things, so let's go through them. The good news, we can cultivate those three things through our morning and evening meditation. Now, there's your New Year's resolution. Meditate. Meditation isn't Buddhist, it isn't spiritual, it isn't whatever, it's human. All of us can do it. Meditation is intended to get you back to your fundamental human nature, which is fundamentally good. If we see a puppy in pain getting kicked, all of our hearts leap out of our chest, right? It's a natural human reaction to care when we see others in pain. But we get away from that because we think selfishness is the way to happiness. And it really seems to work. I mean, look at, you know, look at our society today. But the people who have success through selfishness still aren't happy, right? All right. Um, <clears throat> So good news, we can cultivate those three things through our morning and evening meditation. Now there's your New Year's resolution. Meditate for a few, here's how to do it. Meditate for a few minutes each morning. Begin with a bow. Or, and dedicate your day to be of benefit. That's number one. Then, with good posture, place attention on the breath in and out. Eyes open, especially in the morning. Uh, as we don't want to separate ourselves from our lives, but to infuse our daily life with the power of this simple, it's straightforward, meditation is very straightforward, it's simple, yet difficult, it's a lifelong process, you're never going to be enlightened tomorrow, right, or today, particularly. Um, it's just an ongoing process, so let's not be too goal-oriented. All right. Um, End with a contemplation. What is one thing I feel compassionate about? So this morning I said, I, what is one thing I care about? I said, I really care. This is a weird specific one, but it's good to pick weird specific things, not general things like I care about people. Today I thought about, we have this huge little free library in front of our office in downtown Boulder. We call it Elephant HQ. And this little free library, which is a great program. I hope you all know it. Um, super fun. Anyone can do it. You can put a little free library. That can be your new New Year's resolution if you don't have one. So I said, I care about people, about literacy, about people getting to read, about children particularly getting to read. Uh, in this day and age when we're all on our phones and Netflix and whatever, reading can be so grounding. Um, and we all say that, but we don't really do it. So that was the one thing I decided to care about today. So every day, pick some more about Janet. I care about, um, you know, sustainability. I care about permaculture. I care about donating coats to the homeless. It can be any specific thing. It can be a little thing. I care about um, being vegan, whatever. Okay. <clears throat> and then secondly, what is one thing I'm grateful for? So today I said I'm grateful for my mom because she is so – Great. She just got me to care about learning and thinking and caring and being environmentally aware. And she made me smile my whole life. And she was my mom and dad. And she brought me up to respect women. And blah, blah, blah. I, I really love my mom, um, even though she drove me crazy when I was 15. All right. Um, and then you've already started with the aspiration to be of benefit. Then bow out. And you can do that literally in, say, two to five minutes. So you bow, you dedicate your day and any merit from your meditation to be a benefit. Then you contemplate those three. Then you follow your breath. So we didn't, we skipped over that part. You follow your breath in and out. When you find yourself distracted, you're thinking about a boy or a girl or a cookie or a fight you had or good or bad. It doesn't matter. Your mind is thinking about stuff or that Mariah Carey song or whatever. She was singing New Year's last night. Just label it thinking. Ah, I'm thinking. Come back to your breath again and again. And what that does is it trains our mind, our, particularly our neurotic mind, to be present, which is so cool because that's where all the good stuff happens, right? Uh, when we're awake for our life, we feel more. And it's not always going to be pleasant, but it's always going to be true. And that allows us long-term to have more pleasant uh, because we're not avoiding reality, right? All right. Um, oh, my God. I can't believe I'm on camera right after waking up. Okay. 
So uh, all of that is in the sidebar for reference, if any of you want to look at it. And we have articles. Uh, maybe the editor on duty can put uh, Chukim Trunkpo's article on how to meditate. Let's look at Redford real quick. He's going to sleep. He's given up. He's such a good boy. I'm grateful for this dog and all his extra neck stuff. Okay. Um, so that's the first thing I wanted to read. And then there's a second thing, if you don't mind, and this video seems to be pretty big, so people are clearly ready for some New Year's meaningfulness. So, so t just to wrap that up, that is the way. That motivation, appreciation or gratitude, uh, acknowledging what your, uh, what were the three things? More coffee, appreciation or gratitude, empathy or caring, and what was the third one? Huh. Oh, and the feeling that we can be a benefit, that it's not all for us. So in Buddhism they say, if you wanna be happy, think first of others, not only, it's important to think about yourself and care about yourself, nothing's wrong with yourself. And if you want to be miserable, think only of yourself. If you want to be miserable, be self-obsessed. So it's a kind of contradictory thing. If you want to be happy, think first of others. So that's the be a benefit. All right, I'm going to read what I wrote last night, if that's okay. Um, and it's on our Instagram. If you hate President Barack Obama, I apologize, but he has some sweet tweets oops, about stuff. But then right below that is what I wrote. So even if you dislike President Obama, I mean, the Obama tweets are great, but he's not even tweeting about himself. He's just tweeting about, you know, wonderful Americans doing wonderful things. But then right below that is what I wrote, if you want to read it for a reference. So I'll read that, and uh, it kind of sums up. Well, you'll see. A Merry New Year's to all of you, dear elephant readers. And if you're just tuning in, please, in the comments, say what your New Year's resolution is. And you can start watching from the beginning as soon as this video is ended to to get the Buddhist sort of reminder about how to fulfill those resolutions instead of just doing them for a week. The average success is like a week for New Year's resolutions. We can do a little better. Not through willpower or self-aggression, but through what I just discussed. Ha, uh, a Merry New Year's to all of you, dear elephant readers, dear good humans, dear you. In many ways, it's been a long, dark, rancorous year. But as Pema Chodron, the Buddhist author, often reminds us, this is a time that reminds us of what is precious. Crisis is opportunity. The way out of our problems is not selfishness, but caring. So instead of retreating to our little gated communities, uh, we need to extend ourselves to community to create a society that is safer and, and um, happier for all of us. Remember that, and your 2018 will be a full, sweet, loveful one. Isolation, even in riches, will never bring joy. Um, nothing is wrong with being alone. Being alone is beautiful. Being lonely is beautiful. But isolation, um, out of selfishness or out of trying to get away from problems, won't bring us joy. Uh, if you'd like to help, okay, here's a few ways to get involved with Elephant. If you'd like to help Elephant, in, and the editor on duty, if you could put these links in the comments. If you'd like to help Elephant in a big way, elephantjournal.com slash VIP. That's a big way and involves money. We need it having been stepped on by Facebook in 2017. But that's the end of the pitches. If you're super inspired about Elephant, elephantjournal.com slash VIP. If you'd like to get our daily inspiration, is anyone here super inspired about Elephant? You don't have to give. But if you appreciate the role of elephant and you want to keep us going, that's one way to help. All right. Um, uh, and Facebook has kind of crushed us in 2017, but we're still doing super well, bigger staff than ever. If you'd like to get our daily inspiration in the busy inbox of our speedy lives, so this is free. If you'd like to get our daily inspiration, go to elephantjournal.com slash best. That's for this kind of inspiration. If you found any inspiration in what I'm passing along, not in me, but in what I'm passing along, you get that every single day from elephantjournal.com slash best. If you'd like to become a member, here's a third way, and read Unlimited Elephant, uh, elephantjournal.com slash 
member. I hope the editor can get all these links in the comments. Or if one of you is inspired about Elephant, please put these links in the comments. I'd be grateful personally. Uh, whatever you do, jump in. We are community. So this isn't some sort of fundraising pitch. This is a pitch to be involved, to help our mindful work. We are a community. We are not here to make millions of dollars. We are here to be a benefit in the short life to this beautiful but troubled world. So help us jump in. This is not a spectator sport. Elephant's only going to be here uh, if you want it to be here. All right. So we don't view you as clients, customers, or users as tech people describe people. Um, we view you as equals, as humans, as community. Let's make this world a place we want our next generations to inherit. Happy New Year. That's from me. Uh, and perhaps the most powerful way, and here is one plug. Perhaps the most powerful way to connect with Elephant is Elephant Journal Academy. I don't know if people know Elephant Academy. Thousands of people have now done it. People love it. It's literally the funnest thing we get to do. We train you how to be a benefit in practical ways through communication, through writing, through journalism ethics, through social media. If you want to blow up your Instagram or Facebook or whatever, we train that. We're live in the field. We have 5 million Facebook fans on 60 pages. That's more, three times more than MSNBC, which is a huge company, right, on Facebook. Um, so join Elephant Journal Academy. The new one's starting in about, I don't know, like a month, a couple weeks. Uh, so you can apply now. The link is elephantjournal.com slash path. Um, and the, if you apply right now, you can still get the early bird discount. Um, it's a three-month online, super fun and hard work academy. Um, and you can also do the audit, which is self-paced and super cheap. So the link to both is elephantjournal.com slash path. Uh, all right. Now I'm going to go through comments. And if any of you have any, um, sorry, I keep cutting off Redford here. If any of you have any uh, questions or comments, I'll try to view them. Although it's not letting me view comments. Maybe there's too many comments. Oh, what a bummer. Oh. I think I can go to my own link if you wait one second. Oh, but will that echo everything? Oh, my God. All right. Sorry, please hold on. Now I can see the comments. Or don't hold on. Uh, yeah, Facebook is not loading the comments for me, folks, so sorry. Um but big love to all of you, and I hope this was at all helpful. I hope you'll join me in Elephant Journal Academy. Uh, I hope you'll take your dog out on a walk. I hope um, you'll write an article on Elephant this year, elephantjournal.com slash submit. Um, it's a great way to reach millions of people, not just 10 or 20 or 100 or whatever you're reaching on Instagram, and you can reach beyond the choir. We're a big platform. We're here for you, and uh, we love you. You know, we care about you, and I hope you love us and care about us. Uh, let's make America and this world a kinder, more empathetic place. Uh, there's nothing weak about kindness. Kindness makes resilient, strong communities uh, that can handle anything. So good luck to us in 2018. And I'm sorry I can't read the comments, but they're not loading. So thank you.